So, you know, yeah, kind of practice just. But there you can zoom in definitely quite a bit. So go ahead and zoom in. Oh, where's your, uh, you should have a remote control. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see Look that. in that bag. In that bag? Okay. okay. Find it. I was wondering, because I know, I know, uh, Go ahead and zoom zoom in a little bit so that the top of the frame is right where that home of the eagle. 
So, if you start to see that eagle, you're, you're, you're too... Oh, yeah. See, because the ball isn't really ever going to go any higher than that. So you're going to just kind of, you know... Uh -huh. oh. So, oh, so, yeah. so you want to be right around there. Hey everybody, welcome to Hudson's Bay High School. We're here tonight with some Greater St. Helens League Volleyball between the Hudson's Bay Eagles and the Fort Vancouver Trappers. My name is Nick Vole. I'll be with you all night long. We're going to have some other people rotating in and out of the announcer area here. So this should be a lot of fun hearing from some different folks. And we've got a classic rivalry here in Vancouver, the Trappers and the Eagles. The Trappers won the first matchup between these two teams earlier this season and that represents their only league victory so far. They are two and seven overall. Their other win coming over Benson High School of Portland. On the other side of the net, we've got Hudson's Bay. They are one and eight overall. They won last night, although I didn't see who it was against. So they are one and eight. We've got a one and eight league team versus a one and seven league team. Something's got to give tonight, and I know both of these teams are pretty excited to play their rival. We are just moments away from the start of the game. We're going to have some player introductions, and we're going to have the national anthem, and then we'll get right into it. We've got a pretty good crew tonight. We've got students from Hudson's Bay High School and from Fort Vancouver High School. 
So we're pretty excited to have them in the house with us tonight. Some of them doing it for the very first time, so I'm pretty excited about that. You can see on your screen there the officials coming down, teams lining up, and we'll have our player introductions. The gym here at Hudson's Bay, you can probably tell on your screen there, has these new grandstands paid for with your bond dollars, and they're pretty darn sharp. It's, it's fun to come into a gym that looks this good. The gymnasium starting to fill up now too with fans ready for the varsity action. We were joking as a crew before the broadcast, this is the first time we've ever seen a varsity volleyball game start on time. Typically the JV games and the freshman games go long. So I'm glad we're able to start right here on the dot at seven. Looks like they may be doing something special tonight. All right, we're gonna do the national anthem and then we'll be right back with you. And now for the starting lineups. Looks like we may have something special happening down here on the Hudson's Bay sideline. We're going to hear from a Bay student. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear what she's going to say here. But I'll be quiet. So again, I'm not quite sure if our mics picked that up. Hopefully they did, but if you didn't hear, the uh, folks from both sides of the net here encouraging fans to follow good sportsmanship. A uh, big focus this year for Vancouver Public Schools is sportsmanship, and I uh, hope we see a lot of that tonight. So now with the starting lineups. We've got Taryn Albrecht, Avelina Bratkoff, Lila Sassy, Yareth Cortez, Abigail Cisneros, Alani Baker, Zyla Eleazar, FJ Tuala. Kavei Tuala, or I believe they call her Kiki Tuala. And Katie Ritter. And here comes Emma Roberts. And 
Now we're going to see the Eagles lineup. So Promise Bond first out of the gate, number one. Five foot six setter, a junior. This is Jarris Salas and Emily Escalante. I don't have number four on my roster, so I might have to get an updated one here in a moment. This is Jackie Erickson. Yeah, I don't have some of these players. I think I might have an outdated roster. I'll have to work on that here at the break. So a crew member of mine is going to go get a new roster for me so I can give you the names correctly here. Trenisha Doyle, the head coach of the Hudson's Bay Eagles. Over on the other side, you've got Paige Lufkin-Quant, both coaches with these teams for a couple of years here and developing some pretty close, strong programs. So yeah, it's, like I say, it's been a big emphasis this year, the whole sportsmanship thing, and you can see these players giving high fives before the game starts, which is kind of an interesting twist because typically you might see that at the end of the game. This sort of sets the tone that we're going to be positive with one another and have a fun ball game. So we'll get underway in just a moment with the volleyball action. As I mentioned, we're gonna have some guests on tonight during the second set. We're gonna have Greg Roberts, the athletic director from Hudson's Bay to talk about some of the great stuff happening here at Bay. And it's possible we might have some of our students on as well tonight, our student crew members who have some aspirations to do some sports broadcasting. So it'll be fun to get to know them just a little bit tonight too. So players sort of getting set and ready to go. As I mentioned, sportsmanship a major focus for the district this year. The athletics department putting together a video series that has uh, kind of been spread out to the district just to encourage positive fan player interactions, taking it easy on the refs, remembering this is about fun. This is, these are kids trying to have a good time and learn about sportsmanship and how to play volleyball and work together as a team and make these really solid high school memories. So it's important for fans to just remember that, you know, and the fan, the players themselves as well. This is this is supposed to be fun. So uh, I can see these players already embodying that with their interactions with one another. Pretty pretty cool to see, and I'm glad it's a focus point for the school district this year. It looks like Fort Vancouver is going to be first on the serve here tonight. I believe that's Emma Roberts back there, and we're off. Nice bump in the backcourt. See a big spike coming up here. Oh, but she sailed it. You see, not too happy with that one there. That was uh, Kiki Tuala there who sailed that one. You can see on the replay there. She got set up pretty well, but sailed it over that end, end line there. So now it's Hudson's base turn to serve, and first up is Promise Bond. Off the net. And that's another Hudson's Bay point. Remembering now in high school volleyball, the scoring rules are a bit different than when I was in school. I know that for sure. So it's rally scoring. So every serve results in a point for somebody. Bond with a wicked slicer there. There's another Hudson's Art. They're calling net. Calling, nope, they're saying it's good. So here's Bond again with the serve. I can see the Hudson's Bay players encouraging the fans to stand up. And you can see right there a bunch of Fort fans getting loud. Some good natured uh, competitive cheering here. I'm not sure what the delay in the action is, but it looks like we are ready to go as the fans pump it up. Here's the serve from Bond. Some good net play there. Another Eagles point. 
So remembering in their first matchup this year, Fort Vancouver won three sets to one. Of course, Hudson's Bay would like to take a little revenge on their home court, and they come out strong up 4 nothing early. That ball sails long. So there's your first trapper point. But a good set there. It's a good series out of Page, uh, Promise Bond to get this game going in the right direction for Hudson's Bay. So that ball into the net. Lila Sassy not able to get enough mustard on that one to get it over the net. And then we'll be back here with a Hudson's Bay serve. This time it's going to be Arlene Velasquez. Arlene serving from the middle. And that ball sails wide right. You know, every server likes to serve from a different spot. Everybody's got their own style. Service now to the Trappers. It looks like Annabelle Ferrani is going to have the, the serve. Excuse me, uh, Kiki Tuala. Great save by Tuala there. And that's an Eagles point. Good little rally there for those for both teams. But uh, Hudson's Bay is going to be back with the serve. This time it's going to be Jacqueline Erickson on the serve, a five foot ten midcourt player from uh, excuse me, a senior. She pops that one up high. They able to keep that ball in play and force a trapper's error. That's another point. 7-2 Eagles now. A lot of momentum over on the black side there. Ooh, good save there. Hudson's Bay trying to keep this one going. Can they? No, that one's in the bench. We've got a trapper's point. 7-3. So Erickson stung that one, but uh, Fort made a really good dig to keep that play alive, and now they've got the chance to seize a little momentum with a serve here coming up. From a player I don't have on my roster, but I believe it might be Jordan Spain. She's on the junior varsity roster as number 21. So 7-4 Eagles. The lefty with the serve here. That was a wicked one. Bay man managing to keep that one to play. And Roberts punches that one back over the net. Tuala got it down. Just a great bit of placement there. Didn't have to put a lot on it, just put it in the exact right spot. You can watch here, sees the weakness and just dumps it right over the top onto that end line. So Spain again with the serve. She's got a nice controlled serve there. Knows where she's going with it. A bit of a scramble here. Oh, a little miscommunication cost the Trappers a point there. Eliezer had it. Sassy thought Eliezer had it. <laughs> the ball drops to the to the gym floor here. So another Hudson's Bay serve. Swanson here, Sophia Swanson. I didn't see what the call was there, maybe a double. In any case, it's an Eagles point. They are up 9-5. That ball probably going out of bounds, but Spain played it safe. Wow, she kept it alive, but that goes into the crowd. Good bit of hustle there out of the Eagles, but uh, the Trapper's too tough on that one. So serving now is going to be Alani Baker for the Trappers. Three-point match here. Let's see if she can draw just a little bit closer. Yeah. 
That ball does squeak over the net. And that's a trapper's point. So again, a lot of the rules you may have grown up with a little different now in modern volleyball. Every play results in a point. And that ball, although it hit the net, doesn't matter anymore. That's a point for the trappers. Wicked topspin there on that serve. But here come the Eagles. The ball still in play. Good bit of scrambling there from the Eagles. A smart little set there by Roberts. And Tuala with the big hammer. Nine eight Eagles they surged out to an early lead, but the Trappers are surging right back. Here comes Baker with the serve. Good bit of top spin on those serves from Baker, and she bumps it here. And there's an Eagles point. So 10-8, Hudson's Bay. Alana Stevens here with the serve. There's another Eagles point. Eliezer trying to spike that from the back line, but couldn't get quite enough to get over the net on that one. And Stevens again with the serve. That ball sails long, so you can see her teammates there, get it down, get it down, but it's a, it's a tight rope to walk there. So we've got a sub in the, in the ball game now, Shakira Gonzalez for Hudson's Bay, and it looks like we've got a couple of new trappers in too. I didn't catch the numbers, but I'll catch up with them here in a moment. Serving now is, oh, great little diving serve there. That was, uh, I believe it was F.J. Tuala. She's back to serve again. Ooh, wicked. That one's tough to handle. That sort of knuckling, diving ball. She finds that dead spot and hits it. We've got ourselves a time out. So 11-11, entertaining first set here between these two rivals. Hey, while well, we've got a moment, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some exciting job opportunities at Vancouver Public Schools. If you may have noticed, uh, some of your students' bus routes have been behind. That's because the district doesn't have enough bus drivers, and we are now hiring. It's a great part-time job that can work into a full-time job. It's competitively paid. It has good benefits. And the best part is you get to be around kids every day. Be the first person they see in the morning and the last person they see in the afternoon. So if you're interested, go to the district's website and get started. There's training. Uh, pay training and all kinds of really great benefits and again get being around kids every day is a really fun thing to get to do like look at those kids on those that cheer squad there just seeing those smiling faces every day is awfully fun <laughs> both sections here of students having a lot of fun cheering dancing around I see uh, administrators from both schools are here tonight to support their school I see principal Kurt Scheidel from Fort over in the Fort section some uh, administrators from Bay over in their section. And we're back to the action. Here's Tuala. Another wicked spike. Wow. Three in a row right in that dead spot. She knows where she wants to hit it. Hudson's Bay making a sub here now. Coming back into the game is going to be Alana Stevens. Let's see if Tuala can do it again. Oh, she did it. Wow. Finds that line. She hits three down the middle. And when they start leaning that way, she goes to the outside and finds that red stripe. Great bit of service there. So now it's a 13-11 Trappers lead. Tuala going for her fifth in a row, fifth ace in a row. And she's got it. Wow.
Is that another timeout? Yep, we've got ourselves another timeout. Trying to stop the bleeding here if you're Hudson's Bay. Try to cool off the hot hand in Tuala as well. Well, shoot, I have all kinds of messages from the school district that I can tell you about. I've got another one for you right now. The district is in the middle of its long-term planning process. It doesn't sound that exciting, but what it actually is is you, parents and community members, getting to help shape the future of your school district. Right now, you can go online on the district's website and fill out a survey. That's pretty darn easy to do. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's really helpful. And if you really want to get involved, we encourage you later this year to get involved in some of the in-person panels where you get to share your actual uh, opinions and your, and your feedback and help shape the way the district is going to approach education for the next five years. It's an easy and, and important way for you to get involved in your child's education and, and really impact our community in a positive way. So we're back to the action here and FJ Tuala going for her sixth ace in a row. Oh, she finds the net that time. Great run out of Tuala though. Really turn the momentum in this game back towards the Trappers as they lead 14 to 12. So Mariah Hassler now up for the Eagles on service. The junior. Some great face paint tonight. A lot of spirit between these two teams. And that ball sails long. Eagles take the point. So Hassler back to serve again. Trappers play that one well. See if they can keep this rally going. They do. Just long. Good bit of scrambling volleyball there, but Fort unable to come up with a point there as Sassy's little punch shot there sails long. We are all knotted up at 14, and we're back to Hassler on the serve. That ball sails long. So 15-14, Fort Vancouver. We're playing ourselves to 25 in the first four sets if it goes that long. Fifth set would go to 15 if it is necessary. So a lot of volleyball here left to play in the first set. And these teams going back and forth. And Roberts with the serve. This is their second time around on, on service. And Hudson's Bay drops that ball right in. So 15 up and back around to Promise Bond, who was our first server of the night for Hudson's Bay. This is her second shift. On Bond sails that one into the stand. Some good pursuit there by the Hudson's Bay players, but no dice. That's a Fort Vancouver point. See on our replay here, she just off the side of her arms there into the stands. So here's Lila Sassy on the serve for Fort Vancouver. It looks like Hudson's Bay is huddled up as the officials are talking. I'm not sure what they're discussing. Not sure if we can get a shot of them talking, but it looks like whatever they're discussing is resolved. So we're about to resume action here. Now Roberts, the team captain, getting some clarification from the official as to what is going on. And Bond comes in from Hudson's Bay as well. And see them hearing from the official. All right, so. Looks like they changed the score back to 15-15. Maybe there's a scoring error. So here's Bond on the serve. For some reason that play didn't count and I'm not sure why. Well, that one counts and it drops down for an Eagles point. You can see it just clipping the net there on the replay.
So Bond again with a serve, number one on your screen. Ooh, she floats that one, just sails wide, and we are all knotted up at 16. I have a feeling it's going to be one of those nights, which makes for a fun night of volleyball. Just back and forth, nobody giving up. Out. Looked like a close one, but that one is out. Yeah, that was Lila Sassy on the serve. So Velasquez with a serve. That ball sails out. So 18-16 Eagles, a lot of back and forth in this one. Here's Velasquez's serve. Scramble here, Roberts punches it over. Back out to the outside, oh, big stuff. Jordan Spain on the stuff right there. Gets the props from her team. Nothing says I love you teammate more than a two-handed shove to the chest. And that's what she just got right there. Watch this, bang. Great replay right there. Tuala, great dig there. And there's a trapper point. Alani Baker with the spike. And Kiki Tuala now back for her second serve. A wayward set there pushed her beyond the pole. So she spiked it from out of the area she can. She was too far wide and it went around the pole rather than over the net. So that is a trapper point. They are now up 19-18. Here's Tuala. And that ball sails long. So we got a substitution here for Hudson's Bay. It looks like uh, Aisha Drama has come into the game. And Bond slams that one into the net. There's a trapper point. 2019 Fort Vancouver. So Spain puts that one into the net. He's gonna come right back to Hudson's Bay, all knotted up at 20. So five points to win. Somebody could go on a run here. Like we've seen a couple of times throughout the, tonight's ball game. Oh, big stuff. Fort recovers. Roberts finds the back. Emma Roberts. You know, we've seen her play for a couple of years here. She always such a great nose for the ball and, and spacing on the court. She, I feel like she always sort of knows where she is and knows where the ball needs to go. And you can see it on that play right there. Alani Baker with the serve. Great dig there. Bay with the slam. And we're all tied up at 21. So the initial serve was a pretty good one. So Alana Stevens now serving for Bay. Nice save there.
Oh, great placement. Bit of uh, trickery there by Arlene Velasquez. She knew where it had to go and found that spot. Comes, watch this, comes cross court, finds the empty bit of the court there. Into the net, and that's another Eagles point. Looks like we got ourselves a timeout on the trapper side of things, trying to not let all this uh, great back and forth go to waste. Looks like the uh, Hudson's Bay cheerleaders coming out now. Put on a little, little performance. We'll see if we can see any of that at all. Again, coming up here in the next set, I'm going to have Athletic Director Greg Roberts from Hudson's Bay come up. We'll, do, we'll talk about what's going on at Bay this year. Looks like everybody's more or less ready to go. Stevens now on the serve again. Trying to get Bay just a bit closer. Cheerleader trying to get off the court in time for the game to resume. And here we go. Oh, that ball sails long. Fort is right back in it here. 23-22, Fort's got the serve. Looks like it's gonna be FJ Tuala with the serve here. Oh, tough one. We are tied up. So we saw her go on that run earlier in this set. And she picks right up again with a with just a wicked diving serve that they cannot dig out. We are all knotted up at 23. This one goes long, but they can't track it down. Another trapper's point. When Fort has needed big serves, Tuala has come through, and now she's on the verge of uh, game here. It's 24-23. That ball sails into the stands. Fort Vancouver takes set number one, 25-23 in a nail biter. So Fort goes up a set and the Eagles have to be uh, not happy with themselves. They had an opportunity to close that set out but couldn't close the door and Fort Vancouver takes it. So they are up one set to none. Again, this is a best of five format. So Hudson's Bay's got an opportunity here. Took a break there to give some advice to our crew members. I uh, wearing a lot of hats tonight here, so I'm doing play-by-play. -play. We're also helping some new crew members kind of learn what they're doing. We've got our adult coaches here on site as well helping. This is an academic and after-school program, VPS Game Time. So we've got student crew members covering students on the court. Of course, there are adults, you know, teaching them, showing them the way. And this is for many of them tonight, their very first broadcast. So I think they're doing a fantastic job so far following the action. You can see the Eagle cheerleaders there doing their thing. But Fort Vancouver side, pretty active on their own. We do have one more volleyball broad broadcast coming up for you later this year, actually November 1st. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in, in a little bit. We do have three more football broadcasts coming up as well. We've done several volleyball broadcasts earlier this year, and we're starting to catch up now with our football broadcasts. 
So coming up tomorrow, we've got Skyview hosting Kentwood. So a big out-of-conference matchup between those two teams. Skyview off to a great start this year. They're 4-1, including some impressive wins. They're only lost to Oregon powerhouse Jesuit. So they're looking to make some noise. We, we have uh, Hudson's Bay High School coming up later in football this year. I'm looking forward to that. They'll be taking in on Columbia River in a league game. And I always love it when we get to cover two VPS schools against one another. So uh, make sure you stay tuned for those. VPS game time, we've also been given a pretty big opportunity. Uh, last spring, if you saw, we were able to broadcast the 4A and 3A state championship games in basketball live from the Tacoma Dome. This year, we're also going to get to add the 2A and 3A football state championship games from Puyallup. We're very excited about that, working with the WIAA to bring live championship football to the entire state of Washington. Kids from Vancouver Public Schools will be behind the mics and running the replay and doing the graphics and all of it. So uh, it's very exciting. As we get started here in the second set. And joining me now is AD Greg Roberts from Hudson's Bay High School. Greg, thanks for taking the time to stop by. Yeah, my pleasure, Nick. Thanks for uh, bringing the crew out and thanks for uh, being here. Well, I gotta say thanks for the pizza. You're the first athletic director who's ever brought us pizza before. Oh, hey. You're setting a dangerous I precedent. I set some expectations, now I gotta follow that. That's the Bay Way, right? Yeah, that's the Bay Way. <laughs> Shout out to Border Lamas. Oh, great serve to start off there from Promise Bond. So a very exciting first set we just saw there. I, I felt like the Eagles had a had the momentum there, but we had the momentum. I think it was 23-21, and then uh, Tuwala just yeah, went nuts. She's, yeah, she's she's a did. fine server. She's a, she's a powerhouse. Her and her sister are uh, are great athletes, and um, happy they're out here going against the Eagles. Promises a stud, though. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of talent on both these teams. Yeah. So, Greg, talk to us a bit about the uh, athletic season here this fall for the Eagles. Uh, volleyball team not quite where they'd like to be, but you can see they're making strides. Your uh, football team's been very encouraging this year. Yeah, yeah, we doubled up on our uh, win total, and uh, we got four more games left, and we're excited about the prospects. Uh, Trinisha's doing a great job with the team. Um, we lost uh, a lot of players last year. Um, we had, you know, a few graduate. Um, we had some uh, move on to different schools, and she really loves the culture she's creating uh, with this group. Um, it's a younger group. Uh, as I'm looking out there right now, I think they have Stevens as a, a senior on there, but she's she's a junior. So um, we bring back a lot of people for next year, and, and it's exciting. Trini's just having a great time this year. Um, and when you're not winning much, uh, it can it can wear on you. It can wear on the girls and. That's when you really need to rely on that culture that, that you have, and uh, they've done a good job of creating that this year and having a blast. So. Yeah, you wouldn't know that they're they're having a losing record from their attitudes and their way with one another. Like it's a very positive venture over there. Yeah, definitely, and that's you know pretty intentional by Trinisha and and Coach Zoe and Coach Alexis. Uh, You'll get to meet Coach Alexis later on this year. She's our new head girls basketball coach. Oh, exciting! Um, you know. Uh, uh, Rainville, who's been a staple here forever and had a lot of success in the girls' basketball program, has moved on. He's got, I think, a million grandkids. <laughs> so uh, he's excited to do that. But uh, it's, a, it's a new generation for girls' basketball. So we're excited to have Alexis on board. And she's been a part of the volleyball staff. She's kind of a late addition. Um, we had a huge number of tryouts this year, so we decided to keep everybody. Uh, That's great. Yeah. I mean, more opportunities for kids to participate, the better. Yeah, definitely. I, I am pretty excited for your girls' basketball season. Talking about it a minute ago, you guys have turned Hudson's Bay into one of the regional powers. Yeah. It's incredible. You know, from, from a few years ago when they're struggling to win a league game to all of a sudden knocking off Prairie, I mean, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, that's... So uh, the AD duties are into effect here. <laughs> Greg having to help some folks with something real quick. Part of being on the job. 
Yeah, it never stops. Sorry about that interruption. They're <laughs> interrupting my broadcasting debut. This man. is your debut? This is my debut. I'm nervous. I'm sweating up here, Nick. Well, I, you know, as I get older, I sweat all the time, and I don't know why. <laughs> So we've got ourselves um, a 5-3-4 Vancouver lead. Make that a 6-3-4 Vancouver lead. So but getting back to girls basketball, um, you know, Rainville has done a great job. And, you know, our girls have been super talented. Uh, but we, we lose a lot from last year. Um, Mahela Harrison, who is a two-year all-league performer, uh, she, she uh, decided to try the academy life in Florida. Oh, wow. Um, and so she'll be missed. She's a great kid and wish her nothing but the best. Uh, so it's really going to be, you know, Promise Bond, who you see out there. Alana Stevens is a powerhouse down in the post. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing her shine. Miranda Gonzalez, who's uh, a state-level competitor in cross country. Uh, she's a smooth lefty. Um, she'll get an opportunity to shine. Uh, we got Zariah Jones. Devin, uh, who's one of the best on-ball um, on ball defenders in the league. So, you know, we, we take a step back. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of excitement around the new coach and a lot of work that she can do um, for the program. It's pretty incredible just thinking about the rally there ends in on Eagle Point, how, how culture can really make a huge difference. You know, year to year keeping, you know, even if you lose talent, you're still competitive. You're still, everybody's having fun because they're all together. Yeah, and that's really where the focus needs to be. Uh, we're not going to have a J.D. Martin uh, rolling by here every, you know, four years, and she's a phenomenal kid and, and, you know, an even better athlete, leading scorer for Eastern Washington her freshman year. Yeah. You just don't get a lot of those kids every now and then, so you really rely on that culture um, to, to get you through those times where you're struggling, um, where things aren't going your way, and and making it a positive experience for all your kids. But what it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Losing doesn't help. So 7-5 here, Fort Vancouver. Some good rallying going on tonight. That's one of the things I love about when Fort and Bay play each other, oh. pretty much in any sport. It, they're always such competitive, fun, fun games to, to watch and to broadcast. They are. They are. And we... Um, we enjoy the rivalry. Uh, we enjoy the banter. Uh, we just want to keep things positive, cheer on both schools, both athletes. Um, and we're looking forward to uh, your campaign in 2023-24, in 20, Nick, uh, bringing back the Peace Pipe football game. Oh, yeah, I would love that. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that was my campaign. But yeah, I, I, think, I think we need a guy like you to really take it over and spearhead it. Yeah, I, so it was always one of our most fun games to broadcast. We had so much trivia in there. It was also competitive, yeah. so much history. Man, the oldest, oldest, I think, game in, in Vancouver. I mean, and one, one of the older ones in Washington, too, yeah. I'm sure. We were thinking, you know how we do doubleheaders at Kiggins fairly regularly. How cool it would be for, you know, the Skyview River Bay Fort oh my doubleheader yeah. on a Friday night. Yeah, be that would fantastic. be incredible. Oh, man. So, Have you pitched this to the people with more power than I do? Yeah, right. they, don't, they don't listen to people like me, though, Nick. <laughs> they need a Nick Vole in the news, some some history thrown in there. Yeah, I love, like, in those Peace Pipe games, we, all, we talk about Gary Boggs so much. Yep. You know, with connections to both schools. Yeah. I mean, it's Boggs Field, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, if I were a Bay fan, you know, I can't take sides. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the, the, the lettering at Boggs Field is red, and, yeah, he was the coach at Forward, but he went to bed. Yeah. So it's one of those weird things. Um, I think there's a, I'm a, you probably don't know this, I'm a huge Oklahoma fan. My parents went to OU, and so I grew up going to OU games, and Daryl Royal was a, was, a, was a legendary player for Oklahoma, and then he coached at Texas. And the, the field in Texas is named after him, but he, OU fans kind of claim him as their own. So it's <laughs> one of those weird, weird, funny things. But yeah, we would love to bring back that game. Looks like we got ourselves a timeout. Fort Vancouver up 11 to six after taking set one. And the Eagles have decided to take a break and regroup here, try not to let this game get out of hand, or this, this set get out of hand. Do you do um, a volleyball game a week, or what's your crew doing in the, in the, in the fall? 
So in the fall, we primarily cover football and volleyball. Okay. We, we used to also cover soccer, but as part of the, as you know, as, as when the bond measure passed, mm -hmm. school-based fields were refurbished, turf came in, lights went up. It's more fun for the soccer teams to play there than at Kiggins because Kiggins, yeah, for all of its splendor, is huge. And you can have a giant crowd for soccer that feels like nobody's there at Kiggins. Yeah. If they're standing on the sidelines at your home field, you can feel them. So, unfortunately, when they built those fields, they didn't put Internet access in. So oh, no. we, we can't broadcast from there. Got it. So it's a big loss for us because we love to do soccer uh, as well. We did it for years and years. Yeah. So now it's just volleyball and football in the fall. And in the winter, we, we cover basketball. And yep. We keep talking about doing wrestling, and I'm really interested in it. But the last two years, both of our broadcasts have been canceled for various reasons from okay. in wrestling. But I would love to get wrestling going as well. One of our big challenges as a program has been just manpower because in COVID really hurt us. We were starting to build up, so we always had good crews, and we have a great crew here tonight. But COVID really hurt us, and we're finally starting to get back. So yeah. I'm hoping we can start broadening out. And I don't need to get too deep into this, but our future plans also include – so all of our equipment that we broadcast with comes from a grant from Comcast Cable. Oh, cool. So that's why we have all this great stuff we can bring you. Yeah. And so this year our, our focus is to get all this equipment into every school site. So mm. it's not just the district coming in and doing games. Every school will be able to produce their oh, own man. sporting events. Yeah, that would be incredible. So that's kind of what we're working towards. So I hope next year or even later this year, if the equipment comes in in time, we have even more live sports for folks because schools can do it themselves now. Yeah. And the technology is getting cheaper and better, so we can kind of utilize things we already have. And yeah. the more these kids can be on TV or, or on YouTube, yeah. the better. Well, I appreciate all you guys do. Did, does the audience know like who the camera crew is tonight and all those things? Or? Yeah, I talked about it just That's a little so bit. Cool. And, and later we're going to do what we call our crew cam, where they have them get shots of oh, each okay. other. So everybody on the crew is going to get on TV tonight. Oof, that was a close such a, you know, a lot of what we try to do in education is make things relevant to our kids so they can see kind of the bigger picture and how this could apply in different areas. And this is about as real as it gets. Yeah, and I mentioned to the listeners earlier, I'm, you were not on headset yet, but we were doing the 2A, 3A, and 3A football state championships from Puyallup this year. Oh, wow. So, uh, we'll see you there. We're, we're, yeah, right? <laughs> I hope Eagles. so. No. I hope so. You know, you guys <laughs> have one of the most fun offenses in the area. Just, yeah, we do. Did you hear about Mateo last week? Was it two, 243 yards that I said? Broken there? collarbone. Oh, no, I didn't He's hear that. He's done for the season. Oh, man. Mateo Verone, yes. the star running back from Hudson oh, Bay. Oh, my heart broke. It just sunk, you know, end of his senior year. And he was having a great year. One of the most electric runners in the Greater St. Helens League, for sure. Yeah, so... Um, it was awesome. Our, our business office, you know, I think he took the first couple of days this week. I, he was in a lot of pain. Um, so he took the first couple of days to, to rest and recover. And then uh, he came back Wednesday and our, our business office put together this awesome care package for him. Cause I mean, it's just everybody knows how hard that kid works. And um, for, for that to happen is just a, a major, uh, major bummer. But he's He's smiling. He's happy to helping the team out. Um, he's going to be on the box, uh, just kind of telling us what he sees. And so, new chapter for him. Well, he's the kind of kid you hope a college out there was yeah. paying attention because yeah. he's got talent. He's obviously a good a good guy. Mm -hmm. So it'd be fun to see him playing on Saturdays next year somewhere. Yeah, that's our goal. And I know uh, Coach Olivero is really um, pushing. Uh, that component, and he was getting some some looks earlier in the season. I mean, he was just on fire, and so um, you know, collarbone you can recover from. It's not like tearing a knee or anything like that. So we're we're hoping he's got a a, a smooth smooth recovery, and he'll be playing uh, next Saturday or on Saturdays next fall. So the Eagles here with a bit of a surge down 11-15, but staying in this thing. Some good back and forth here. Oh, oh great that save. Was nice. A little lefty action. Oh, that ball might have been out, Nick. Yeah, I know. It's one of those, though, you got to play it safe because if that ball drops, then <laughs> oh, you really man. kick yourself. This is a great rally. Oh, another. And that's an Eagles point. Wow. Great point, or rally by both teams there. 
Like. You know, I um, I taught at Thomas Jefferson Middle School for like nine years, and I coached four straight seasons every year I was there. Oh, wow. And I never did volleyball. And my buddy was in Minnesota watching a Vikings game, and it was a Monday night game, and he didn't come back till Tuesday. And so he asked me if I'd take the girls' uh, varsity team on Tuesday, and I was like a fish out of water. I had no idea about the rotations. Parents were like – trying to help me in the in the stands the refs like what is this and i was like i don't know I'm, i and it was it was the most uncomfortable sports experience <laughs> of my life more uncomfortable than i think we went out a few years ago when you were at jefferson we covered the staff basketball game it was oh yeah it was more uncomfortable oh, than that yes that's, that's another thing we should talk we should do a staff versus staff basketball game with fort i'd love that oh we, man we could broadcast that yeah we raised so much money uh, that was fantastic. Thank you for reminding me. Now, I can I play in this game? That's my yes. main concern. Yes. I, I mean, I'm technically I should probably be helping broadcast it. Yeah. But my well, ego would want me on the court. Yeah, we we'll take you as a as an honorary eagle on on that night. That's a very generous of you. That was fun. Well, and you know. See, look, another great. So 14-15, the Eagles not going anywhere. They were down six just a moment ago, and now they're only down one. Not a lot of quit in this uh, black and gold squad. You know, volleyball is one of those things where if you get if you get hot on serve, it's just, oh, man, I, I should have opened my mouth. <laughs> is that classic. what they call the announcer's curse? Yeah, classic jinx. Oh, yeah. dang. <laughs> but, you, I mean, you can. You can rattle off five or six points and – and before you know, I mean, last game, what we were up 23-21, and they went four straight to end the game. Yeah. It just takes, it just takes a hot server. Yeah. Now, what, what else is happening at Bay this year? What's exciting happening in the hallways of Hudson's Bay High School? Uh, the kids. Uh, this year, I'll tell you what, and I'm going to knock on wood because I'm a college baseball That's player. Plastic. So That's plastic. That's yeah, plastic. well, let me get real low. <laughs> He's tapping the court beneath us. Um, the kids have been just fantastic, and uh, we are receiving our kids this year in a much better place than I feel like you know we received them last year. And sure, and I think maybe our our staff was a little fatigued because we hadn't put in full you know full weeks, um, and so it's been a great start to the year. Um, it really has. You know, uh, I don't like to talk about a lot of discipline, but we. We bought our Dero's pizza on Friday because we went, you know, the whole the whole month without any physical altercations, and that's just it's it's awesome, and they're a huge part of our admin team and being out and just building positive relationships with our kids. So for us to go through, you know, the first month of school without that, we're just it's been it's been a great year. So um, you know, the cross country team is is doing really well. Um, our, our tennis team has won more matches this year than they have in, like, the last five years. Wow. Um, our golf team went from two players to 18. Oh, wow. And so we have posted scores for the first time since I've, I've been here. Um, you know, our soccer team uh, is great, but I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with our league with Richfield, River, Hawkinson, yeah. all in the Final Four last year of state. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're playing, we're all playing, us and four are playing elite level talent week in and week out. And so they're, they're grinding. Um, and it's just been, it's been, a, it's been a great start. So um, just trying to get better at what I do um, and, and how I serve the kids. But we're just all really digging our kids right now. Um, we've got a great staff, looking forward to winter. Um, we got to get you out for a baseball game. Sure. I, baseball is really fun for us to broadcast, uh, except a problem is it's the weather is so unpredictable. Well, we got underneath the stadium. Can you? Uh, well, so you can put you can put a camera or two underneath there, but you really need to get out in center field to yeah. get that over the shoulder shot. Okay. Is, so we need to maybe plan for like late May when we can be a little more reliable. Okay. But it is on the radar, and it was one of those things we actually have purchased some equipment with our grant to do baseball out at Propstra, but then okay. COVID hit and we got yeah. behind, and so this is on the radar for okay. sure. We are interested in that. Because, I mean, baseball was my sport in high school. Was like, it? Well, I, I love basketball the most, but baseball was the one I was actually good at. Where would you go to high school? Um, I grew up in Gresham. I know okay. it's a Gresham High School and then Portland Lutheran High School. Oh, cool. So um, you're, which no you're, longer exists. You're a Portlander through and through. 
Well, well I, not necessarily. Oh, okay. I, I, I grew up in South Dakota until I was 10 and then oh. moved to Portland. And then oh, I wow. worked here in Vancouver for 13 years. So Vancouver okay. gets a claim on me as well. Yeah, yeah, we'll take that. Do you ever go back to South Dakota? Uh, not often. Okay. It's not my favorite state. Got it. So look at the run just for, just went on, you know, since we've been talking. Yeah. It's just, you know. Well, but look who's look who's in service right now. Yeah. I mean, Tuala is just, wasn't it Tuala? No, I'm wrong. Oh. Uh, it's sassy. Yeah. Yeah, you just you go on these runs, and it's like we start talking about South Dakota, and, <laughs> and all of a sudden we're down eight. There's a good swing. The, uh, it was interesting, you were mentioning how many players come out for the golf team, and to me, like, the biggest number is not really wins and losses necessarily, it's participation. Yeah, so that's one thing that we look at in, you know, our, in our coaches' meeting and our athletic program is our numbers. And I believe that extracurricular activities is one of the best things high schools have going for them. And that's something that I tell all freshman parents. Like, I don't care how your kid is connected, they just need to be connected. And... If they want to do a sport, then great. Um, and so building our programs and retaining our athletes is, is something that we really focus on. Um, so, yeah, those numbers, um, those numbers for us, for cross country, um, slow pitch softball, we had our first JV team ever last year, not in slow pitch, but in fast pitch. Um, and uh, so we just, we, yeah, we want our, our numbers to, to grow and increase, and we want our athletes to stay out. Yeah, um, and not even just sports. I mean, all those extracurriculars, too. You know, like your orchestra here that yeah. is really phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's important. Nice nice second win by the uh, second game by the Trappers. Yeah, I'll say. So we got we to gotta get one here. I was thinking to bring out the brooms. Tra Trappers takes that, too. They are up 2 nothing now. We are in the middle of the set break. Uh, so, Greg, thanks for uh, – you got yeah. duties here. I know you got to yeah. go do some stuff. But thank you so much for coming on and talking about your school. I really appreciated hearing about it. And, uh, you know, we've got your football game coming up against River in a couple weeks. We're really excited yeah. to do. Yeah, that's going to be a big one, our last one of the year. Um, hopefully not our last, our last league game of the year. Um, but, hey, we appreciate you being here. And uh, now that we've raised the bars, hopefully the rest of the ADs will, will follow along. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Like, I usually when crew has pizza, it's because I bought it. And <laughs> I'm not a rich man, so <laughs> I right. love it. Um, you know, that Fort, uh, or that, excuse me, that Bay River game, we got D. White and Sid Sloan are going to oh, be our announcers. Oh, no way. So, oh, man. Some popular uh, Bay yeah, staff are you members. Are going to send that clip to Fox or ESPN? <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be their big debut. <laughs> It'll be fun, I think. That will so. be fun. You know, those are our two golf coaches. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's, talk that. about building the program, those guys. Um, we love both those guys here, and they do a great job uh, for us and our kids. So. Oh, that'll be fun, man. Thanks so much, Nick, for yeah. the time and the opportunity. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Am we're going to turn it over to this guy right here. Yeah, we're going to bring some uh, base students on. are going to help me out, get their all first right. taste of sports broadcasting. All right, all so right. thanks, Greg. Yep, thank you. Hey, thanks for doing that. All right, we're going to have Hudson Wright step on here. He's going to put his headset on. Hudson, this is uh, this is your first sports broadcasting yes. experience. Hudson, why don't you tell everybody that's listening about yourself? Um, I play tennis for Bay. Um, I'm really big into musical instruments, like playing guitar and stuff like that. I'm in the band. I play percussion. Um, yeah. That sounds great. Uh, what what year in school are you, Hudson? I am a sophomore. A sophomore. I thought you were older for some reason. You've been with us now. This is your second year doing broadcast yes. with us. So I guess in my head you were older. Um, Hudson, I need you to hold it down for one second. I have to go tell the director something. I'll be right back. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you on your very first time broadcasting, but you're going to be by yourself for about 15 seconds. Okay. Don't say anything stupid. I'm back, Hudson. What'd you, what'd you say while I was gone? Nothing. You didn't say anything. You were just no. silent. For, okay, yes. well, that's the best way to not say anything dumb is just to not say anything at all. Right. Not that you would have said something dumb, of no. course. I was just teasing you. but. Yeah. So it's it's 2 nothing trappers here we're going into the third set against Hudson's Bay. What have you seen here in these first two Bay's sets? Bay's put up a pretty good fight. Had some good volleys. Overall, it's been a pretty good game. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far as well. 
And now we're going to have you on for a part of the set, and then we'll get one of the other crew members. we got several guys uh, here tonight who are interested in potentially doing sports broadcasting, including yourself, so we want to make sure everybody gets a turn here. Sounds good. So how is the school year going? Is it fun for you as a student yes. to be back, like, in a full way? Because, you yeah. know, COVID for two years kind of yeah. derailed things. I'm excited for the uh, Spirit events this year. Uh, they'll be fun. Yeah, when is Spirit, yeah, Spirit Week coming up? Um, I have no idea, actually. You're just, you're just excited whenever yes. it arrives. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, so we're just kind of waiting to get this third set here going. I'm not sure the officials are talking something over with. Uh... Trying to, uh, as I mentioned, wearing a few hats here, trying to talk to our crew. I want them to try to get some different uh, positions in tonight, trying different cameras and experience everything we have to offer here tonight. And we're back underway. Emma Roberts sends that one into the net. So a good start here for the Eagles. They need to win this one to keep this uh, match alive here. They're down two sets to none on their home court. And first up to serve here is Promise Bond. She's number one on her jersey, and she's been the number one server tonight here for the Eagles. Nice. She sends that one into the net. Now, now Hudson, I assume you have classes with some of these athletes out here. Yes. Is it fun? Is it weird to see them in these two different contexts? You know, you sit next to them in class, and then you come out, and they're, you know, kicking butt in volleyball? Uh, not really. Um, same energy. Yeah. Yeah. Just positive, uh, yeah. outstanding young women. Yep. A lot of school spirit here at Bay? Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your favorite class, Hudson? Um, probably video production or band. Video production. I know you have a new teacher, Mr. Pearl, this year yes. taking over for the legendary Randy Howard, who just retired. Yeah. Is it fun? Is it fun having just a you know a, a new teacher with a lot of energy and new ideas? Yeah, it's fun. I like him a lot, but I mean nothing replaces Mr. Howard. So um, sure, it's not a I, yeah, it's not even a replacement, right? He's just another yeah. guy who comes. You can't replace a legend. Right. Yeah, Ms. Randy Howard was video production he teacher here for I'm guessing 30 years or so. 30 something years. Saw a lot of really. I know he was the second through. oldest teacher to teach a bay. So that's all I know. <laughs> Did he tell you that? Was that? Yeah. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mr. Howard, uh, talented teacher, and he's missed. Looks like that's a Fort Point kind of a, some question on who is going to get that point. They give it to Fort. You can see on the replay exactly what happened here. I'm not sure if I gathered why that point went the Fort way, but. They're not quite sure either. Yeah. Ooh. Off Ooh. the shoulder, that was uh, a tough serve to handle there. Michaeli yeah. plastered that one. That wasn't Michaeli, excuse me, that was Eleazar plastered that one. Went right off the shoulder there of Mariah Hassler. So Eleazar here with the serve again. Big hits here on this rally. Yeah. The official, official, not sure about that one. Oh, the, the 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 gentleman at the net says that ball was in. So Fort's going to serve again. They're up four-two here. Now you mentioned you were on the tennis team, and uh, earlier I was talking to Mr. Roberts, your athletic director, said you guys are having a good season. How's it going from your perspective? Um, it's been pretty good. We made the newspaper for um, me and Brandon. We um, won the match for a battleground. Um, pretty good match. I've won three games, um, and the season's been pretty good. I was um, in cross country for like six years. And it just got too much for me, so I tried to do tennis, and it's working out better for me. Oh, that's great. So, so are you playing as a as an individual? Or are you playing in a, as a as a doubles team, or um, how? Um, in the newspaper, I played as a doubles team, um, and I play second singles right now and third doubles. Okay, that's exciting. You're only a sophomore, so you got two more years of this. Yeah. Yeah, I play racquetball with my dad, so that's kind of like why I kind of wanted to switch is sure. something different. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, racket sports. Yeah. 
That's good. That's good to get involved in your school. You know, Mr. Roberts and I were just talking about that a moment ago. Just kind of makes school more fun when you're involved in multiple ways. Right, you know? yeah. You got, you know, your tennis. You've got your, the, the broadcasting stuff, the band. Yep. I know the band here at Hudson's Bay is pretty solid. So. Yep. All right, so 7-3 Trappers. This year for homecoming, we were doing our first um, marching thing for on the field that Bay's ever done. So oh, that'll fun. be fun. When is that? Do you know who you're playing? Uh, we're doing the homecoming for homecoming. But do you know which game that is? I'm curious if it's the river game because we're covering that one. So I probably, really hope it is so probably, we, can, we, yeah. can, we can get your marching It probably band is the river game. I don't have my phone on me, but I would check. All right, that, I, hope, I hope it is. It'd be really great to get yeah. that marching band on TV at halftime. Yeah. I know when Skyview's band goes out there, we always cover them, and it's, right, it's, it's so pretty much fun. cool. Yeah. yeah, that's something I wish every school does. Wow, fast and furious this right. rally here. Nobody giving up. Boom! Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. I thought that ball was yeah. over the moment. The moment Tuala spiked that, I thought that's a trapper point, but the Eagles disagreed, and you can see why. The last game I filmed for Fort Volleyball a couple weeks ago was pretty good, too. And that Fort won that, that uh, matchup. Yeah. Whenever, whenever the Bay Fort games happen, we like to broadcast those. Anytime it's two VPS schools, you know we are a Vancouver Public Schools program. Whoa, that ball sails. She's not happy with herself after that one. Velasquez kind of let yeah, that one sail. Yeah, they beat us in tennis. They have a pretty good, solid tennis team this year. Fort, Fort BU, Fort. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Fort's had a pretty solid tennis team for a couple of years now. Yeah. So Hudson's Bay's mistake starting to catch up with them there. A little bit of miscommunication. That's another trapper's point. It's 9-5. Just to make sure, Hudson, everybody's going to get on who wants to get on in case this is a sweep. We're almost out of periods here. When the score gets to 15, I'm going to have, I'm going to tap you on the shoulder and we're going to let uh, your classmates step on in. And Sounds we'll, good. We'll talk a little bit with them. We're going to have Rodrigo come in. Nice. So 10-5, Fort Vancouver. Fort's always head to head like this too. What do you mean? Uh, score wise. Like they're always pretty solid. Oh, sure. Fort and Bay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They're always competitive games. Yeah. So a little bit of a break there for uh, Hudson's Bay, and now back to serve is going to be Steven. She's been very solid all night long on the serve, so I'm going to try to draw the Eagles a bit closer here, down four points. Yeah, well, that's a good way to start off your, your service run right there. She's got a pretty, right. pretty deceptive serve there because she runs into the ball. And a lot of side spin on that ball, and it just kind of drops. Right. All right. So 11-7, Trappers. Back to serve has been their ace all night long. FJ Tuala. Bay. When, when you can't cleanly bump that initial serve, yeah. it can be so hard to recover. And Tuala hits that ball with such velocity, right. and it's dipping the entire time. It's just really hard to set yourself up for a solid return. Yeah. Ooh, she probably yeah. sailed that one, but you can't take the chance, and Hassler can't quite get, catch up with that fastball. Right. That's 13-7, Fort Vancouver. It looks like maybe have an injury, or is it a timeout? It's a timeout on the floor. Yeah, Coach uh, yeah. Coach Doyle talking there to Mariah Hassler in the yellow there. I think she that ball hit her pretty darn hard. She's kind of checking in on her. Hopefully she's okay. Yeah, I think she is. I think it's probably one of those yeah. just you know you got to talk your way through it kind of situations. Oh, I just heard I just heard over the PA there's free popcorn at the concession stand. So if we see a mass exodus of fans, you know, that's why. All right, you're going to go get some free popcorn? Yeah. All right, we're going to have Rodrigo step in. Okay. Hudson, congratulations. Yeah. Great job on your first broadcasting you. stint.
So I, I'm not kidding. As soon as they announced free popcorn over the PA, Hudson just said, okay, I'm done, and he ran out. And I don't blame him. Free popcorn. So in a moment here, Rodrigo's going to step in and do some announcing with us, and Hudson's going to take over at camera one. In the meantime, volleyball's back in action, and guess who's serving? It's F.J. Tuala. Sort of anyone's ball at the net there. That's a trapper point. Those Tuala's are tough to contain. That time Kiki Tuala there with the tip. Kind of see on the replay here, she just finds the spot. Bit of a scramble here. Roberts punches it back over. And the Eagles come up with that point. You know, sometimes it just takes a little play here and there, just kind of a broken, broken play to give yourself the momentum to start coming back. Saw Hassler on the service, Mariah Hassler. Nice little slider there. That one was tough to, to handle from Tuala. Looks like a lift there, yeah. Bond meant to put that one a little farther out. So back to serve now for Fort Vancouver is going to be Emma Roberts. So on mic number two, joining me now is Rodrigo Morales. You're a student at Hudson's Bay High School, is that right? Yes, it is. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming out tonight and being on the crew and for helping me out on the mic. Mm -hmm. Happy to hear you. So you are an interesting story to me. We were talking earlier. You are you are a true house divided within yourself. Tell people why I say that. I'm actually a half bay, half fort student. And how, how is that possible? I'm part of a magnet program that Fort has graciously offered to me. Okay, so you're in you're in uh, manufacturing, advanced yes. manufacturing. Advanced or manufacturing. as when I was a kid, welding. Yes. Um, that's pretty awesome. You get so so you you do half your day at one school, half your day at the other. Is that right? And take a bus in between. Uh huh. Uh, what are you learning in that advanced manufacturing class? Um, how to weld, how to use a CNC machine, a plasma machine, um, how to use calipers, just the main manufacturing components. Some pretty hardcore like career skills. Yes. Is is that where you think you're gonna end up as an adult, or are you looking? One hundred percent. Yeah, not the broadcasting thing. No. Because uh, you were mentioning too, you're you're a host on the uh, the local new, your, excuse me, your school news. Yep. That's pretty exciting. Is that is that challenging for you? Um, I do get a little camera shy from here and there, but you know, gotta get used to it. Yeah, it's it, it, skills that are gonna like be valuable to anywhere you go down the line as as an adult. So who are you rooting for tonight is the question I have for you. It's hard, you know, four years at at Bay and my first year at four, but. You know, I have to say for really their game has been great tonight. You know, we've seen a lot of, a lot of com like uh, teamwork today and just very competitive. Yeah, it's been a fun game. Mm -hmm. You've been uh, you were running game cam for quite a while here earlier. Uh, was that fun for you? Yeah. First time? Yeah, definitely. Amazing first time experience. Now, are you involved in any sports at uh, either school? No, but I will try out for soccer and baseball at Fort. Just to, you know, go and my friends. That's cool. That's it's good to get involved. Mm -hmm. So, 17-12, Trappers. I gotta say, as soon as you came on the mic, the Eagles went on a run. Maybe you're their good luck talisman. Hopefully, that changes soon. <laughs> Well, either way, you're you're set up either way because you can claim you can claim you know victory no matter who wins tonight. Uh, so we've got a timeout here. Uh, so what are your, some of your favorite classes at Bay then? So we know you're enjoying the advancement manufacturing at Fort. What do you like doing at Bay? Uh, horticulture has really been a good part. Oh, cool! Really fun. Yeah, great program you guys have here at Bay. It's horticulture and the Aces program. Yes. Uh, do you, so you are you, you enjoy growing things? Do you garden at home or anything, or what part of it are you into? Because it's a pretty broad program. Yeah, it's really really broad on what you can do in uh, horticulture. Personally, I like working in the garden sale. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's super fun. I, I took a few sunflowers last year. Came nice. out beautiful this year. Every year my wife, uh, when it's garden time, she goes to all the plant sales around and picks up her tomatoes and her cucumbers and her zucchini, I guess. And mm -hmm. uh, That's really cool that you get to do that. I know you have really good teachers here. So uh, Mr. Lawrence, Ms. Carpenter, and some of the other ones, yeah. Um, that's really fun. 
So are you, I know you're a senior, are you, are you thinking about college or are you thinking about going to the, you'll see you're going to the trades. Mm -hmm. That's exciting, get into like an apprentice program or how does that work and how does being in the advanced manufacturing program like help set you up after high school? Well, being in the advanced manufacturing program really opens doors for me more and gives me a vision and an idea of what life would be actually working at a manufacturing company. Sure, so you know that when you get out into that field, this is something you already know you like. Yep, actually starting next month, I'll hopefully be contracted to work at a manufacturing company here in um, Vancouver. Oh, that's incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, I, I asked uh, Hudson when he was on the mic, now you might know students on both sides of the net, right? I mean, you go to class with these folks. Do you know any of these kids out here? Um, on the Bay side, I do know Autumn and uh, Emily. I did go to school with, well, I did have a few classes with them. Is it, is it weird or fun to see them in a different light here? Because, you know, you're used to them in the classroom? Yeah, it's fun to see them be very competitive, very school no, spirit. Yeah, that's awesome. I, uh, it just shows you different sides of people when you see them in a different light, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So the Eagles here hanging in. They need to win this set to extend this thing out. If, if Fort Vancouver wins this set, this, this match is over, and we're wrapping it up for the night. I still have two other Bay students who said they wanted to get on the mic, too. So I hope we go another set so we can talk to them, too. And so we can see more volleyball. Another Eagles point, 18-15. Just hanging around, trying to make that run. So now Jacqueline Erickson on the serve. Spain with the big spike, and that ball goes sailing out of bounds. So a great setup from Roberts out to Spain, who hammers that one down, and that's a trapper point. You can see on the replay there, Roberts goes backwards. It's Spain with that big lefty. Love watching lefties do their thing. It's something about it. It's just different than righties, and I don't know how. They move differently, and here's Spain, the big lefty, with the serve. That one hits net. She has been serving well tonight, so that's sort of an anomaly. So are you still in the video program at Bay? I, unfortunately, I had to be taken out since it was an elective, but Mr. Pearl does allow me to be help here around. Oh, that's there. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, uh, it's cool to see that you're involved in so many things. You know, high school is an opportunity to take advantage of different experiences and I'm, it's cool that you're doing it and not everyone does yeah especially being part of two after school programs too yeah I mean that's that's a commitment right there all right so here's Baker on the serve Hassler from the back line and Tuwala hammers it 21-16, we're just four points away from wrapping this up for Fort. Hasser, great dig there to keep that thing alive, but hits it right to Roberts who puts it down. Do you watch a lot of volleyball, Rodrigo? Event, um, here and there sometimes. Today is actually my first Bay and Fort oh. volleyball game, which is very exciting for me. <laughs> yeah, it's hard when you're doing all your own after school activities to get out to the events and stuff. I... Yeah, this is my first opportunity to call a volleyball game in several years. We have the great Miss Pagel, who, uh, Julie Pagel, who is a teacher and administrator at Fort, mm -hmm. and she's a great volleyball announcer, and she does all the volleyball games for us, but she's visiting her grandson's birthday in Colorado, so don't begrudge her for missing a broadcast for something important like that, a four-year-old in Colorado, birthday party. So if she's listening out there, happy birthday, Miss Pagel, to your grandchild. Oh, great bit of network right there. Velasquez just puts it down. 
right there. That ball sails wide. Swanson couldn't put that one where she wanted it and 23-19 trappers. It's bad news for Hudson's Bay. FJ Tuala tonight's uh, service star. Back to serve. Ooh, and there's an ace. Just, it comes in too hot to handle. Now I see the Fort students are getting excited. I think they're getting ready to storm the court. I see Principal Kurt Scheidel down there trying to calm everybody down. Remembering our uh, good sportsmanship stuff we've been talking about tonight. That ball sails long, so Hudson's Bay still alive here. Only down four points. 24-20, and they're going into service now. Mariah Hassler is going to have the serve in yellow. That's it. Fort Vancouver wins this rivalry game. It earns their third win of the year. Three set to nothing win over Hudson's Bay. So Rodrigo, thanks so much for coming and talking to me. Congrats on this great senior year you're having. And uh, thanks for uh, joining our crew tonight. Thank you so much for giving the opportunity. Yeah, of course. So we are gonna hang on for just a moment, watch these teams celebrate, and we'll wrap up here momentarily. Fort Vancouver wins three sets to none over Hudson's Bay High School. Great fans tonight, great interviews. Uh, I thank Greg Roberts, Rodrigo Velasquez, and Hudson Wright for coming on the mic and talking to me, keeping me company. I thank our other student crew members here for doing a great show. And we are going to wrap it up. Remember, tomorrow night we're back live on TV, this time with football. We're going to have Skyview hosting Kentwood at 7 p.m. on Comcast Channel 29. Make sure you tune in for that. I will be on the call on that one as well, so I uh, hope you join us then. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. On behalf of our crew and the staff here at Hudson's Bay High School and Fort Vancouver High School, I wish you a great night. <laughs>